basically the quick yeah. one is this. Doublelift did a stream, an initial one, where he just said his thoughts of the demands. And then he did a follow-up because basically people said he vented the negotiations. The quick version, before I give my take, and you guys go first, is... The demands were stuff like the Valorant style system. Spoiler, no franchise team wants that. You're just letting people compete with me without paying $10 million. Then you have Riot has to commit to a pool of salaries. Okay, I can see why Riot wants that. What does that have to do with the teams, by the way? How do the teams to blame for Riot not doing that? Just shows how there's no logic here. Then it goes, allow LCS orgs to partner with affiliates for cost sharing. Not a bad idea. Just who the fuck would do it when it loses money and has no viewership? It's a dog shit request. By the way, he was in Evil Geniuses. Why don't you just go back home? You tell you what, Phil, you just get some all this funding that's easy to get. And you go and invest in one of these teams. Oh, yeah, you don't even know who Fish Taco are. You don't even know the teams in the NACL. That's why Dom saw all that shit. And that didn't even have any info from me and realized himself, whoa, something's off here. This guy seems like he's sort of on a grift. He's sort of full of shit then we have this thing where it said they had to guarantee whoever wins the they have whoever wins lcs summer has to have guaranteed minimum contracts for the next year like these are all just like fantasy demands these have nothing to do with academy even by the way you know the joke there is they're all like fucking senators in america the bill is called like the help little poor african kids in academy bill so that if you're against it they're like what you hate little african kids but then in the bill it's like and of course uh more money for uh military spending here and uh, my state gets like a tax break <laughs> like this and you just bang all this shit and they're like what does the minimum contract of an lcs player have to do with the fucking academy guy then the last one said you had to do a three out of five continuity rule for people on the released rosters basically so that like you would get more time in the career you that's the one i didn't understand the most but yeah so what double have essentially said was that he disagreed with all of them except for one <laughs> and then he went on to explain that like he didn't really know that the option was to not be able to play summer and obviously the, the gangster one was just take the world slots don't even have a qualifier just no worlds whatsoever uh -huh. and so what happened was double lift essentially explained that he that he didn't make these demands. Some of the players maybe didn't even know the demands. They just believed in Philip Aram, who they talked to. He actually makes it sound for real, like they were just shocked that they got all the players into a Discord. And then they thought, wow, I'm part of history. And then just went along with it and just and gave Philip Aram carte blanche to go and ask for whatever he wanted. And he did all this. And in doing so, Doublelift has revealed he doesn't want to miss Summer Split. He doesn't want to miss Worlds. He actually wants to play in that regard. And so, yeah, there's, there's the initial thing of what Doublelift did. Then when people said, you've in the negotiations then double lift also did another stream where in this one he also said and this is just who double lift is but we'll get to the comedy later he just said like well actually philip aram sent me a message and said like thanks for the video buddy i really appreciate it which double lift <laughs> to be you're the best value. <laughs> oh, awesome yeah i've helped the call i'm helping I, I i'm helping like the fucking dog with the lab coat on or whatever like that from golden retriever so if we get on the back the double lift angles obviously essentially He's the player who's the greatest NA player ever. He's won the most titles, probably been paid the most money. Essentially, he represents the sort of player I was talking about on the Four Horsemen episode and what they really care about. So what do you two think of Doublelift's approach and essentially like sort of getting a real insight into how this happened and what the players think? What do you think, Monty? So I think with with Doublelift, like he's so like he is so close. And Dom tweeted about this where it's like he's so close to getting it, which is that, well, first off, he did to a certain degree, compromise the negotiations. Now, you can make an argument that it's not compromised because the players were never going to fold about literally receiving no money for standing up for challengers and these demands, which is true, because I don't understand why they would potentially lose hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, and lose the potential chance to go to Worlds over this particular set of issues. Um, but at the same time, like, you can't just go... It, it, literally, the only power he has is withholding his labor. That's it. That's the only power he's got. So to be to go there and be like, well, the only power I have is this, but I'm definitely not going to do that publicly is obviously compromising the position that they're taking because it's the only position they could possibly have that is worth anything. So I think that's ridiculous. The idea that Phil Aram gives him like a high five behind the scenes, double lift. What the fuck is Phil Aram supposed to do in this situation? He can't undo the thing that you did. So his choice is, antagonize you more maybe have you jump off the the walkout bandwagon or be like yeah that was really helpful good job guy like what he's obviously not going to be super thrilled that wait, this occurred wait, wait, wait. I, I mean this might just be the the sort of british the british guy in me and maybe i'm giving uh <laughs> philip aram too much credit for having a sense of humor but if, if what thorin read out was basically word for word i assume it was a joke no like thanks a lot you little <laughs> well, fucking double dickhead yeah yeah but i, I assume he's like yes thanks that fucking 
human sized knife you've just launched in my back. I what, assume that is the way. In Britain, that is how people would address yeah, it. Probably. Exactly. Yeah. Go, Thanks yes. very much for that. You really helped the cause. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I hear what you guys are saying. As, as British people, I don't think that was the case here. <laughs> uh, Americans are more direct and we just don't pick up on that. I mean, the famous thing is like you guys say like something is quite good and we think that means it's good, but it means it's shit. <laughs> I mean, the other thing is I would say, I know what Monty means. I would say it like this. I think it's a bit like what you said about antagonizing him. To me, actually what Philip Aram was, he probably wasn't being as sarcastic as we think he was, Rich. I think what he was doing was exactly that. It was more like, okay, Double F, you've done your video now. Let's just leave it there, okay? That's what he was trying <laughs> yep. to say. And then Double F goes, oh, brilliant. Well, you liked it, so I'll bring another one out. And just went and did more shit. And by the way, I, I said it earlier but the craziest part to me was that Doublelift not only said the quiet part out loud, but holy shit, is it good to be Thorin and Richard Lewis, where you have real sources and you know what you're talking about. Because when you go and watch that Four Horsemen episode now, who was full of shit about what players want and how they would act and who was bang on the money? Because what I said was that, of course, players aren't going to come in and just decide themselves that, yes, do a walkout and like give up all our salaries. Instead, what happened was... They went into a call, even as Doublelift implies, they didn't even think it was going to happen. They thought, I'll just turn up and then probably nothing happens. We all just go home, right? Then they were shocked. There were that many people there. They didn't seemingly agree or suggest these demands. They just said sort of like, yeah, go ahead, Phil, fight the cause, mate. And then he went like, yeah, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll get Riot back for lying. There must be a minimum contract for this. And then you must let small teams in to battle with the... Literally, by the way, think about this, you dumb motherfucking players. You want to allow amateur teams, third party entities to not pay the franchise fee and then they go and compete against your mate in Team Liquid, 100 Thieves, FlyQuest and Cloud9 and then you're going to turn to that owner and go, hey, can I have another $4 million next? Shut the fuck up, you idiot. You actual cretin. So to me, Doublelift gave the whole game away and then that was bad <laughs> enough because he essentially told you how it happened there. But then on top of it, he de as Monty says, he not only said it once, he said two or three times explicitly that he does not want to not be able to play the summer split and yep. not be able to go to Worlds and that if that was the choice he doesn't even think that should be on the table and that he does not <laughs> want to do it by the way he is the LCS this is the biggest name that you must have that's why I agree with you, you can't antagonise him you need him if Bjergsen was still playing you need him too and Doublelift's number one if Doublelift leaves by the way on his own it's over which brings us to another thing we can get to later about the scab thing I could tell you some more info about that because even that was actually interesting behind the scenes but do we have any more thing about the double lift stuff? I mean, you know, double lift is a person, Monty. What do you think about this approach? <laughs> I, I mean, I just think he has no idea what the fuck is going on. Like, he, I, I think he's a very genuine person. Like, there is no subtext to double lift. Like, that's this is what who he is and who he thinks. And he just takes everything at face value. So when Philip Arab gives him this metaphorical high five behind the scenes, like he literally think that thinks that's legitimate. And he doesn't actually use his brain to do any thinking beyond that. And what he did, I think, was very foolish. It was obviously worse than saying nothing at all. He's not obligated to say anything, which is also part of the weirdness of Double Lift, which is like, why do you feel this compulsion to weigh in on this on your stream? And also, how little control does the LCSPA have? Like, shouldn't they have just told the player? I mean, they probably did tell the players if we're being real and he just ignored it. It's implied why based on that thing. You know where it, you saw that Riot wouldn't release the dive because they didn't want to mess up the negotiation. Oh, yeah. And LSPA told the Mikhail Klementov guy who worked at the Washington Post previously that they couldn't do an interview with him or something because basically the negotiations going on. It's implied from that, Monty, that it was essentially like all hands on deck, batting down the hatches, no one say anything, keep quiet and let's get the negotiation. That's implied, right? see more cool funny interesting clips based on topics from my content well subscribe to this channel then or you know be a pleb and don't